Okay, today I'm going to be taking a look at my FG502 and uh, see if I can't spruce it up. Um, I already found one problem. I was uh, twiddling the knob and it was it was erratic and I couldn't quite figure out why it was sometimes not working and uh, so uh, you know you can go around and, and kind of tap things to see if anything was doing something and I this thing runs a potentiometer in the back and I tapped the potentiometer and it seemed to be flaky and I uh, that's weird, and it's kind of a sealed potentiometer. You can't really clean it, so I figured, ah, maybe I could get a new one. And I started looking at the PC board, and yeah, the center wiper was just laying on the contact. The contact, the solder was so cold, and it had pulled out of its own connection, and it was just laying on top, just sort of making an intermediate, intermediate, intermittent, there you go, intermittent contact. Uh, yeah, I'm not too happy with the soldering that uh, Tektronix did, but anyway, um, so I, I cleaned out the hole, and tin, I actually tinned the wire, and then after tinning the wire, I put it back in the hole and soldered it shut. So. Yeah, that's the way it should have been done in the first place. Ten year wires. Um, anyway, uh, so now when I uh, when I turn the knob, it uh, it's really really nice. And uh, let me move this up here. This is the output. Um, but there is a crossover distortion in the uh, in the output. So obviously there's something something funny going on back there. Um, and the high frequency. Uh, setting is completely distorted. So there's something going on in the output section. Um, so we will have to find some schematics and dig into this thing. Um, I did take a look at the uh, these big caps here. They look like they should be changed, but I I looked at the uh, these are just uh, rectification uh, capacitors and the voltage is fine. They're rectifying just fine. They're, they're filtering just fine. So I'm going to leave them alone for now, but uh, maybe someday these need to be these need to be changed. The other ones seem to be uh, high quality sealed sealed tantalums, I believe, and I don't think those are those are likely to go bad. But uh, these guys seem to be good so far. Okay, so we're having some uh, crossover distortion. You would suspect maybe the output amplifier is to blame. So here's the output. Uh, it has a uh, 50 ohm, 47 ohm output impedance. Uh, it's got some short circuit stuff over here too. Some 33 ohms, so it's all protected for short circuit or other types of stuff on the output. Um, so it's a uh, push-pull with the driver, driver. Yeah, and there's a diff amp here. So um, the input comes from over here. So this is the amplitude um, potentiometer. So the whole rest of the instruments over here and it comes in and you can change the amplitude by this uh, by this varying here. Okay. So uh, first things first, there's some test points near the output here for this plus and minus 20 volt rail. So we should make sure the plus and minus 20 volt rail is. So there's a couple test points here. There's a ground test point here. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so we have plus 20 and no ripple. And we have minus 20 and no ripple. So that's looking really, really good. All right. So let's turn the output on. So here's this output that's uh, got this uh, weird distortion. Okay, so I'm going to be taking a look at the input. I'm going to be taking a look at that uh, potentiometer, this amplitude. So this is the raw signal into the uh, final amplifier. So if it's clean, then the amplifier is to blame. Let's uh, put it on here. Of course, it's low gain, so we need to amplify it up. Oh, there we go. So we have glitches coming into the final amplifier. It's 180 degrees out of phase because that uh, final amplifier is inverting. Um, so yeah, so we have something else farther up the chain that's giving us that crossover distortion. So um, I need to start looking at some other schematic. I only printed out this one schematic figuring this is it. Of course this is it. 
No, it's somewhere else on the board. So uh, yeah, let's go take a look for that. All right, so that crossover distortion there, whatever that is, um, let me show you the block diagram here. Um, if I can get this on camera down here. So the, uh, the output amplifier is here. We've blessed that off because we've measured the, the uh, voltage here and it has, still has the crossover distortion. The way, this is a very, very simple uh, instrument. It creates some current sources, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus to generate ramps. So it generates the, the uh, this is the ramp generation thing. Here's the triangle uh, generation. Now the triangle goes into a shaper, um, a shaper, circuit. I'll show you that sometime in the future, but it takes the triangle wave and smooths it, makes it into a um, sine wave. Um, so if the distortion is still on the triangle wave, then we can bless this part off. So uh, certainly is there for a sine wave and yep, it's there for a triangle wave as well. So we know that the uh, problem is upstream here somewhere. Okay. So let's start taking a look at this ramp generating thing. Now, when you generate a ramp, what you need is a constant current and you charge a capacitor up and then you charge a capacitor down. Okay. So, uh, that's what this does. Um, this is a positive current and this is a negative current and this is the capacitor that, uh, we will integrate. Does that make sense? All right, and you say, well, there's just one. How do you do all those ranges and everything? Well, they kind of cheat on the schematic, this box here, this box here, this box here. When you change the range setting, those things change inside those boxes. There's a whole thing on how, let's see, where's the schematic for that? There's a whole thing on, on that, on this page, all the different settings. Here's all the, set, here's all the different capacitors, 10 microfarad, one microfarad, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, uh, then, you know, different, different value caps. Okay. So that, that switches this guy. And then these guys have resistors too, that set the currents. So different currents and different caps. So, okay. So we know the problem is somewhere in here. And so, uh, I was looking at U140 and U175. Let me show you what those are. Uh, these two here, so these are setting up the currents. And so I was probing around in there. Now, one of the things with old instruments is you potentially have some oxidations on the, um, sockets. Okay. And so I was reaching in here and kind of wiggling the part to reseed it on the socket. And, uh, I was, uh, poking around on this one and I got it to change. So let me show you that. All right. So let's do this. Okay. And let, I'm going to put my fat thumb on top of that part. I'm going to push down on that part with my thumb. Poof goes away. <laughs> so, so uh, all I need to do is cut off my thumb and glue it in the box. And then I'll have a working, a working generator. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let me show you what I've been doing there. Okay, this guy right here, this guy right here, I put my thumb on and I push down. There we go. Fixed, bad, fixed, bad. <laughs> so there's some solder joint or something going on down here. I don't know if it's the part itself. Um, maybe stress inside the patch package. I doubt it though. I bet you it's some type of dodgy solder joint or something. So we will flip the board over and look to see what we have on that side. Let's turn the power off, flip the board over. It's over here, over that away. Hmm. Oh, and there's a switch here too that it might be flexing. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. There's a via hole there. Sometimes vias go bad in these old things. Um, but yeah, let me take a closer look at it. See if I see anything suspicious or not. And it could not, might not be those parts are just stressing the board around here. So need to take a close look at this. All right. This is one of those wafer switches that I don't trust. So I'm going to, uh, 
Let's do that. That is the actual mode selection switch. So I'm going to put some deoxid down there and change it to various settings. It might just have been a bad switch contact. And we've seen that before now, haven't we? So um, there's also a resistor potentiometer here that could potentially have been funny too. So definitely some dirt on this uh, on the switch here. So that, that might be a clue. All right, let's go to signs. Nope. It's still there. It's still there. And if I push on the board, it goes away. Can you see that back there? If I just kind of rotate the whole... Oh, yeah, if I kind of rotate the whole thing up a bit, it fixes it. So what part of the PC board am I helping? Remember, we had that really awful solder joint in that one spot. Mmm, boy. Boy, 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 boy. Um, hmm. Okay. More investigation is needed. All right. I've managed to fix it. Uh, sorry it was off camera. Um, but it's pretty boring fix. But uh, I think I know what happened. So I can modify all the ranges now and everything's working good. That high frequency stuff is looking good. Um, yeah, so, like I said, things are usually mechanical in nature when things get this old. <laughs> so let me show you what's going on, what I think I had to do. All right, there are these output transistors over in this area here. And there's also some other transistors. So there's, I don't know... Exact, these, these four here are the output transistors. And these three here are some other transistors that I don't quite know which ones they are quite yet. I need to look at the schematic. But um, in pushing and poking around, uh, I noticed that these heat sinks, which are pushed onto TL5 cans, were touching. Okay? These guys were touching at least two of them were touching and I untouched them and <laughs> poof it works so there was some some kind of crosstalk between these uh, these transistors here uh, probably should put a little band of heat shrink on there or something to keep them from touching it. they probably got rattled around in shipping um, and uh, they started to touch each other but let's try to figure out which ones those are touching and if it makes sense to anybody. Um, so, back out here, we can take a look at our overexposed piece of paper. Uh, there we go. Uh, so we have this component locator. So here are the, here are these four that are the output drivers. And then we have three over there, which it's not really mark quite clearly here, but it's, see, uh, Q, these are R's. Okay, so these are Q's, these are Q's. Q500 and 515. Uh, 500 and 515, hmm. And 506 and 490. So let's see if we can find those. Five, those don't sound familiar. I haven't been looking at that part of the circuit yet. Uh, 500, here's the output section again, 500, 506, 515, it's these guys here, huh, that was still part of the output circuit and I thought we had blessed that off, but maybe by shorting some of these it just, I don't know, hmm. anyway, the, the, my original thought was the problem was here and it seems like it was here, but it was showing in a weird way, uh, I don't know, anyway. Um, yeah, so um, by separating these electrically, <laughs> it now works. Yay. All right, so I'm making, uh, I, I took some uh, heat shrink and I'm making little bitty bands. 
Okay, oh, can you see that? Little bitty bands. And I'm putting these little bands over the over the heat sink tubes to keep things from shorting out. So there we go. I'll just I'll heat those up so that they shrink. But now I have uh, little insulators to keep uh, keep all those tubes from touching ever again. Uh, I think that's a good fix.